A few years ago, me and my friends were cheated out of $100. We created an ad to promote our Roblox game on the website and had it approved by moderation. But Roblox ended up changing their minds and deleted our ad only after we had paid 10,000 Robux for it to run. We asked for a refund and we didn't get one. I made a video about this and one of the biggest questions people had was, why can't you just sue Roblox? The answer is because all of us have technically agreed to the terms of service, the excruciatingly long contract that lets Roblox do basically whatever they want for any reason or even no reason. They have unfettered discretion to delete your items, your games, your account, and apparently your advertisements regardless of how much you paid for them. Also included is an agreement that you can't sue them. Wow, go figure. Instead, you have to go through mandatory informal dispute resolution followed by arbitration. Concepts that I'm sure all of the 10 year olds on Roblox are very familiar with. But what if I were to tell you that this legally binding document may not apply to everyone? In fact, there's a loophole that applies to nearly half of Roblox's users, one that's cost Roblox a significant amount of money. This is the story of the 12-year-old girl who cost Roblox $10 million. Jane Doe discovered Roblox in 2019, when she was just 10 years old. She pulled up the sign-up page where she entered her birthday, username, password, and gender, and right above the bright green sign-up button, a fine print read, By clicking sign up, you are agreeing to the terms of use. That's right, all 30 pages of college-level legalese. It's only a two-hour read for an adult. I'm serious. Roblox believed, and likely still believes, that this is a perfectly valid, legally binding procedure. I want to give a huge shout out to War Thunder for making this video possible. This is a free AAA military action game that simulates battles between real aircraft, ground units, and naval vessels from the world's strongest militaries, playable on PC, Mac, Xbox, and PlayStation. War Thunder's gameplay combines strategy with realism. No other game comes close to the level of detail for large-scale battles. Stunning visuals, explosive sound effects, and accurate physics simulation recreate the art of war. With maps spanning the globe, players can fight in tropical waters, frigid wastelands, and even active volcanoes. Gaijin has been consistently adding new content, including the latest update, codenamed Air Superiority. Now you can outmaneuver players with the Abrams Tusk II and T-90M tanks, or drop bombs on them from the fourth generation F-15 and Su-27. Download War Thunder for free using the link below, and if you're a new player or you're returning after six months, you'll receive special bonuses. These include a week of premium, three premium vehicles, 100,000 Silver Lions, and one week rentals for the P40E1 and M4. You better hurry though, this offer ends soon. Jane Doe signs up for Roblox, and like many children her age, she's hooked. She customizes her avatar using the handful of free items, but eventually grows tired of her small selection and asks her parents to start buying her Robux. With her new allowance, Jane goes on a virtual shopping spree. Over the next two years, she would continuously expand her virtual wardrobe until one day she logs in and realizes several of her items are missing. Roblox had suddenly removed products she paid for with no warning, no notice, and worst of all, no refund. Why would Roblox do this? These items were completely in line with Roblox's rules. Besides, as far as Jane knew, all items had to be pre-screened by moderation. It seemed wrong for Roblox to approve items, let people spend money on them, and only then decide to remove them without even offering a refund. As more and more items vanished from Jane's inventory without any explanation, Jane decided to spend more Robux to replace items that she thought would be hers permanently. This process created a cycle of spending that slowly drained money from her account and her dad's wallet. Unsure of why his daughter was spending so much Robux, Mr. Doe decided to investigate. He found that not only was Roblox deleting items that didn't violate the rules, they were also approving items that never should have been allowed in the first place. And when those items were removed, Roblox would recommend exact copies. This unlicensed Nike top was approved for sale by Roblox moderation. 
After being bought thousands of times, the item was removed, likely for copyright reasons, and in the recommended section, Roblox displays a listing for a copy of the exact same product from the exact same seller. He also found a Glassdoor review from an alleged former moderator who claims that Roblox gave him a content deletion quota. The manager that was in charge of us demanded that we have a set quota on the amount of contents and accounts moderated each day even going as far as to banning users off the platform who'd clearly done nothing that violated our trust and safety policies. The way we were required to treat the platform's users just to meet the required quota was the last straw. Keep in mind, Roblox makes a lot of money off this. Every player-to-player -player transaction nets Roblox 30% of the sale through a marketplace fee. By constantly deleting people's items, Roblox was driving more sales at the expense of their own customers. Jane was clueless to all of this. If she knew that Roblox could remove her items for no reason, she never would have bought them in the first place. From her father's perspective, a multi-billion dollar corporation was taking advantage of not just his daughter, but millions of other users subject to the same treatment. And so he lawyered up and filed a class action lawsuit. You can think of civil court cases like these as tennis matches between lawyers. The plaintiff makes the first serve by filing a complaint, outlining all the reasons why the defendant deserves a lawsuit. Then the defendant can return the serve by filing a motion to dismiss. The plaintiff can file a response to this motion and the defendant can enter a final reply. And from here, the judge will decide if the case should be dropped. If the case is dropped, it's over. Everyone goes home. But if the judge decides the case should go forward, the real battle begins. If the motion to dismiss was a sports match, the rest of civil litigation is an all-out war, with every move costing ungodly amounts of time and money, potentially ending with the defendant being plundered for untold riches. Simply put, Roblox really wants to win. Jane Doe's counsel makes the first serve with a complaint that reads, The predatory conduct taking place on defendant's platform reaches far beyond that which occurs at the hands of other nefarious users and third parties. Defendant itself seeks to fleece its own users financially in a clever content-deleting scheme. It's a powerful serve, but there's something you should know about Roblox's legal team. They're managed far better than the moderation team. This company is well-funded with an all-star legal team of major league lawyers. They file a masterclass of a motion to dismiss that begins with five pages of case law references, over a dozen legal arguments, and a written declaration from Roblox's senior director of product promising to testify if called as a witness. All of this contributes to two main points. One, Jane is legally bound by the terms of service because she agreed to them by signing up. This tiny bit of fine print is proof enough that Jane gave up her right to file this lawsuit as soon as she made her account. Two, the lawsuit is pointless because Roblox already gave Jane a refund uh, after she filed the lawsuit. And guess what? They just rolled out their all new automatic refund program. Wow! Since there's nothing else the court could possibly grant the plaintiff, the case should be dismissed. The refund is a great mystery in this lawsuit because the complaint says she didn't get one. The motion says she did. The response says, uh, no, she didn't. We checked. And the reply says, again, that she totally did. Of course, it would be easy to confirm this fact if plaintiff would simply tell Roblox the username of her Roblox account something plaintiff's counsel has concealed and refused to provide Roblox since the lawsuit was filed more than eight months ago. Roblox was so confident in their automatic refund program, they just assumed that Jane received her refund. When this case reached the judge, he wrote, Roblox argues that this case is moot. I disagree. First, the claims for damages are not moot, at least because the parties disagree about whether Doe actually received this credit. Additionally, a voluntary program whose full scope is not yet known is less certain to remedy harm than a judicial judgment. Okay, so Roblox lost the mootness argument, but what about the terms of service? This is probably one of the most important legal arguments Roblox has at its disposal. Most of their motion hinges on the terms legally applying to Jane. She signed up, so technically she agreed, right? In California contract law, simply agreeing to a contract isn't enough for it to be legally binding. The parties have to understand what they're agreeing to, and the plaintiff argues in their response 
Roblox can't show that Jane understood or even read this contract. Even if Roblox's sign-in screen might alert an adult to the fact that by signing up, they are assenting to a contract, Roblox cannot make a similar showing regarding children, which is important here because Roblox knows at the point of registration how old the user is. A 10-year-old child, like plaintiff, likely does not appreciate the fact that they have entered into a contract when they register a Roblox account. There's even a line in Roblox's terms that says, in order to agree to these terms, you need to be 18 or older or have your parent or guardian's consent to agree to the terms. Roblox doesn't confirm that users under 18 have this consent, unlike platforms like YouTube, which ask for your parents' email or phone number if you're a minor. And so, in their final reply, Roblox simply says that Although she contends otherwise, plaintiff assented to the Roblox terms and is therefore bound by them. Nice. And the Honorable William H. Oric rules in favor of Jane. The judge writes, She was 10 years old. Roblox knew her age. It did not require her to get an adult's permission or supervision. And the only sign that she was agreeing to complicated terms of use was a not-so-conspicuous disclaimer above a bright green sign-up button. Here, both putative contracting parties were aware that Doe was a minor. In light of that fact, it is unreasonable to conclude that she manifested objective assent to be bound. With the terms of service being out of commission, most of Roblox's arguments fell apart. It's a complete disaster. Half of Roblox's users are under 13. If this ruling sets a precedent for future lawsuits, any child under similar circumstances can sue Roblox, get past their arbitration clause and their class action waiver, and anything else that hinges on the terms of service. Think about all the children Roblox is pissed off through falsely banning them. Think about all the victims of exploitation who are misled by Roblox's safety claims. With the motion to dismiss largely denied, Roblox filed the official answer to the complaint, listing out all their defenses and denying nearly all allegations. After nine months of mediation, like a newborn baby, a settlement was finally born. Hooray! It's a boy! In it, Roblox reveals that 8 million accounts lost roughly 2 billion Robux by having their items deleted. That's roughly $20 million. Roblox agreed to create a $10 million settlement fund, which returns nearly half of the alleged losses back to everyone in the US. They also guarantee that an automatic refund program will be in place for at least four years. And based on information from the last four years, this program stands to prevent losses of at least $25 million, and already prevented the loss of more than half a million Robux. You, the viewer, have likely received a message about this lawsuit from the official Roblox account. It reads, where, where, where? Just kidding. It says, As part of a class action settlement, Roblox has agreed to establish a settlement fund of $10 million for the benefit of Roblox users whose items were moderated and who have not yet received a full credit or refund. Such users will automatically receive a credit of Robux to their account without having to take any action. If an eligible user's share of the settlement fund exceeds a value of $10, such users may submit a claim to receive their share as a cash payment instead of Robux. Not only did everyone get millions of dollars of free Robux, Roblox users had their rights recognized in a court of law. And it's all thanks to 12-year-old Jane Doe. I'm Ruben Sim. And this is the story of how a 12-year-old cost Roblox $10 million.